This video will discuss the steepest descent method for geometry optimization of molecular structures. So steepest descent, as I said, is a method for obtaining the local stationary points of a multi-dimensional function. So this matters because the potential energy function of a given molecule is a multi-dimensional function. If there are n atoms, there are three n coordinates. And the local stationary points, those will be things like local minima or lowest energy structures, which we're usually very interested in finding in computational chemistry. So steepest descent in terms of the hierarchy of all possible methods for finding these local minima, these optimized structures, is a simple method for geometry optimization uh, relative to the standards of all the possibilities that exist. Okay, so what is this algorithm? What are the various steps that go into it? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we guess some initial geometry, which I'll label x naught, just as a kind of coordinate vector for all of our coordinates. If this is our, if we have n atoms, there are three n components of this x vector. So we'd guess some initial geometry. And the more reasonable and the closer to our final desired goal structure this is, the better this uh, algorithm is going to perform. Uh, that's pretty true in general for most geometry optimization algorithms. If you, you know, garbage in, garbage out, if you give it a bad guess, it's probably going to give you a bad result. But as long as your guess is reasonable and chemically informed, things usually go okay. Okay, so then you're going to compute the potential energy at that geometry and the not delta I want del upside down delta the energy and gradient so energy and gradient okay so this tells us what our current energy is this tells us uh, what direction if we go is most going to steeply increase the energy so the negative gradient tells us which direction will most quickly decrease the energy it's the direction of the forces of the atom from our potential energy okay then given that energy and gradient we're going to update our geometry so x n plus 1 is equal to xn minus gamma n del v of xn. Okay, so this is our structure that we start with, and then we have a, it goes to a new structure, so the difference between the two is this displacement here. So we are displacing the geometry by a certain amount. So each individual coordinate gets displaced by the magnitude of the partial derivative with respect to energy in that dimension at that given time, and then they are all multiplied by a common scale factor. Okay, and then finally, we will check for convergence. Okay, check for convergence. If yes, oop, move my move my slide over a little bit. Let's move that back. Okay, so if yes, then we are done. And our final geometry, x final equals xn. And if no, then return to step two and repeat. Okay, so we're going to compute the energy, guess an initial geometry, compute the energy and the gradient, use the gradient to displace and update the geometry. We're going to check if our 
we're going to check for convergence. We're going to check if our energy isn't changing anymore, if our gradient is approximately zero, and if our displacement is approaching zero as well. So if we meet all those speci specified criteria, then we are done, and our geometry is our final optimized minimum energy, local minimum structure. If not, we repeat step two and we keep going in a cycle of steps three, two and three, four, until we finally get to our specified convergence. Okay, so various uh, parts in here that we need to take a look at. So we have gamma n. So there are various methods to get gamma n. A lot of them involve uh, various kinds of matrix algebra done based off of what this x naught or xn vector is. So basically this is just a scale factor for saying based off of what the value of our gradient is, how much are we going to move? What's the magnitude we're going to move per unit gradient? So we have to do something to figure that out. And there's, yeah, there's various uh, ways of getting that that involve a little bit more advanced uh, linear algebra in order to get those values. And what are these convergence criteria? What are these, what is going to signify convergence for us? So we need to, we need to converge, as I said, with respect to all three of those uh, values. So the most important being that the gradient, so the magnitude of our del V of our three N coordinates is approximately zero. We say approximately because when you're computing something, you can't get it to be analytically zero, and except for very easy cases. So you get it, you get it close enough to zero that's tolerable. Usually something like, oh, ten to the minus four uh, hard trees per bore, bore being the atomic unit for for distance, which is like 0.529 angstroms, and a hard tree being like 627 kilocalories per mole. Okay, we also need to converge with respect to the energy. So that's just that V of X of N minus V of X of N minus one, that that is approximately going to zero. So the energy is approximately not changing between two consecutive iterations. Uh, value there typically around 10 to the minus sixth Hartree's in energy if you're talking about a quantum mechanical optimization. And then in displacement as well. How far are the atoms moving in subsequent iterations? So the magnitude of xn minus xn minus 1. So each coordinate relative to where it was the previous step is approximately zero as well. And that's also something typically in uh, computational chemistry and quantum mechanical optimizations you'll see typically around 10 to the minus third, 10 to the minus fourth angstroms for either the root mean squared or the maximum allowed value for displacement of atoms between consecutive steps. So if all three of these, or if two out of the three of these, or whatever convergence criteria you specify have converged, then you will finish and you'll be done with the loop here. So an example of the type of trajectory we might get here, if we start up at here at the top of this potential energy function in one dimension, maybe after the first step we kind of have a fairly large step because the gradient is steep, then the step gets smaller because the gradient gets smaller, smaller again, smaller again. And then as the first derivative or the gradient in three n dimensions gets larger, we're going to displace more and more and more. And then the displacements get smaller and smaller and smaller until they get very small as we're approaching the minimum. And then hopefully they get arbitrarily close to the minimum until they pass your convergence criterion and then we're done. So a lot of that is geometry optimization in general. The part which is steepest descent specifically is this third part, which is this, this particular method for updating the geometry between various iterations.